Are you seeking fulfillment for your life? Do you want freedom from fear? That's why we're here. Welcome to Jesus 101, introducing you to the real Jesus. And now, here's your host, Elizabeth Talbot. Welcome to Jesus 101. We continue with our series on radical discipleship, where ordinary people accept extraordinary grace. As a matter of fact, we have defined discipleship as the reversal of values in light of the cross. And so today I put both arrows so that you remember that the cross actually reverses our values because the greatest is the smallest in the kingdom of God. And those who think they're small are considered the greatest in the kingdom of God. And not only that, we, we don't lord it over people, like Jesus said. We serve them instead. So something about the cross, and when you see a God who left everything and emptied himself to save us, something about that view of the cross reverses your own values and you become a disciple of Jesus. Before we go on with today's program, I actually want to do two things, and I don't want to forget them. I, I know that you have been seen throughout watching our programs. On the lower third, you've been seeing an invitation that says, please download our app, Jesus 101 app. We have it for Apple. We have it for Android. We, I, we, I really personally want to invite you to download our app. Uh, you'll find a lot of things there, a lot of resources, and we have a one-minute devotional every morning. One minute. So this is for people on the go that don't have a lot of time. One minute. And today as I was coming to the studio, actually, I listened to a few. And, and Chris, our producer, really is really good. And, and uh, he helps us in many ways. And I think you will love this one-minute devotional. And, and we have 15-minute Bible studies every day as well. And audiobooks and, and videos for free on demand. So... Uh, and even these exact videos that you're probably watching on TV, you can also find them on the app. So I am hoping that you will download the Jesus 101 app. And one more thing I want to say before uh, we start our study for today is that I want to thank a person. His name is Ivers Oslins. He's a PhD. And he did a research on the 12 disciples that has been very handy for us. And he shared his research with us. And uh, I just want to thank Ivers for sharing so many great insights about the 12 disciples that we are studying together. As a matter of fact, the disciples that we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about three disciples because they're the three disciples that we don't know anything about. And it's very, very hard because... As you talk to about disciples and, you know, we have Peter and we have Andrew and we have so many other people that are so known, these three people, nobody knows them. And so we really needed somebody to do a research and see what they found. And uh, we're thanking Ivers and we're thanking Pastor Mike Tucker for being here. Honored to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. You have been such a blessing throughout the whole series. Oh, you're very kind. Not, not just because you're a very funny person. <laughs> and uh, not just Is because... Is that my looks or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, funny looking. Funny no, looking, no, 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 yeah. No. There we very go. funny person. Uh, but you're an insightful person and you love Jesus and you love the gospel of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. And how do you define discipleship? I mean, what is being a disciple? A, a disciple is, is a learner. He's a follower. Someone mm. who follows Jesus Christ. Someone who sits at his feet mm. and listens to the master and tries to become like the master and then invites others to join the master. Yes. And so I think that the, the actual disciple yeah. lives in awe of God's grace. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And I think we said it on the first program that a lot of people have mistaken discipleship. They, they think, uh, they start looking at themselves like holier mm -hmm. than other mm -hmm. people. And you even mentioned the pastor that said, I haven't sinned yeah. for, I don't yeah, know how I, long. I, I, now without sin. You yeah. Know? <laughs> that, are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And we, we talked about the fact that Part of discipleship is living with this paradox of knowing yourself sinful and unworthy mm -hmm. and yet assured of your salvation because yes. of Jesus and what he has the, done. The key is what Jesus has done. Our confidence is in Christ alone, not in ourselves. Exactly. If I'm going to put confidence in me, I'm in trouble. Exactly. I'm in real trouble because exactly. I, I've got nothing to offer. But when my confidence is in Christ, then I have great assurance and that gives me great boldness as well. You know, uh, you just reminded me of something that was in our outline, but Max Lucado has written a great book called Grace. Mm -hmm. um, and he has a part where he talks about 
uh, those who believe in grace a lot. And so he says, those are the grace a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of grace a lot. Mm -hmm. People that believe in grace a lot, but they don't believe in grace alone. Mm. So everybody mm. talks about, sure, we need grace. Yeah, grace. We, I mean, we, Jesus has done all this. I only have done this, but yeah. Jesus needs a little help every yeah, once in a, a while. Yes. And Righteous by faith in Christ alone, plus. Yes, but it's not alone. Yeah. That's why yeah. he says, these are the grace a lot. Yeah. They believe in grace a lot. Yeah, but not entirely. Grace alone. Yeah, grace alone. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. It's, uh, and today we're going to study the three disciples that we know nothing about you know so this should be a short program <laughs> <laughs> well that's why we brought you along because you talk <clears throat> a lot too. i see yeah. i see so actually these three disciples are in the bottom four uh of course judas iscariot the one who betrayed jesus being the one mentioned last in every one of the in lists every list yeah. that we have so we have if you remember when we talk about the 12 disciples we have three groups of four Groups so, so the top group is always first yeah, is Peter, and Peter, James, and Jane, John, Jones, and Andrew. and Andrew. And then you have the other four that we have already done with Nathaniel mm -hmm. and Philip and, mm -hmm. and Thomas. And mm -hmm. so, but then after that, we have these three disciples that are mentioned in all the lists. You know, we have four lists and, and maybe I don't think in any of them we have actually uh, talked about the lists. The first list is in Matthew chapter 10 verses 2 to 4, so that then you have mm -hmm. the 12 disciples there. The second list is in Mark, chapter 3, verses 16 to 19. Then you have Luke 16, uh, verses 14 to 16, and then you have Acts, chapter 1, verse 13. So those are the four lists that we have of all 12 disciples. Mm -hmm. And these three uh, disciples that are not very known are in all the lists. Yeah, all the lists, always listed in the last grouping of, of yes, four. Yes, but we, and they're, again, but they're we not so known. We, yeah, we don't know much about them. And so you, how would you like to be that disciple, the one nobody knows about, you know? E exactly, I mean, you, you would see, after all, Jesus chose them, and yeah. they were three of the 12 yes. closest people to Jesus in the whole world. Mm -hmm. But they, they, they're the ones that nobody knows. Nobody knows about them. So, yes. you know, ministering in obscurity yeah. It's not an easy thing for a lot of people uh -huh. uh, to, you know, if in, I've, I've seen pastors who, who've labored hard for a lot of years and really done a good job, but nobody knows them. Mm. And then they see the guys on TV and they see yeah, the guys, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, that are in yeah, front yeah. of the big audiences. And, and sometimes some of them do deal very well with that. They say, you know what? That's not my, that's not yeah, where exactly. I labor and I'm, I'm fine right but here. But some do not. But some are thinking that's just wrong. You yeah, know? yeah, 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 yeah. And, and these three disciples, I don't know if they even would have had a choice to say, uh, can we get a few more verses in the Bible yeah, yeah, about us? I mean, there must be something that somebody can talk yeah, about. Yeah, I'm scarcely an honorable <laughs> mention. Why, you know, why, why, why am I even here? Well, the first one of those three disciples, uh, his name is James. And the problem with that is that we have another James mm -hmm. that is very important that is in the first group. And that's the one that was part of the, the, the those three that were always with Jesus in the Transfiguration in Gethsemane here and there, you know, Peter, John, and James. And John and James were brothers. But this is the other The other James. James. And so we have a mention here. And sometimes we need to look at uh, very specific verses to find some interesting things about these people. And uh, first of all, James is the same as the other James, the same exact name, Jacobos, you know, in Greek, Jacobos of the Hebrew origin that we have Jacob, but we ended up with James in, in, right. in English. Right. Uh, but this is the other one. And some people think that he might have been Matthew's brother, even though most mm -hmm. scholars don't believe no, that. No, just discount that, but still yeah. it's, it's a possibility. It, it, the possibility is because both of them are uh, talked about as the son of Alphaeus. Of Alphaeus. So Matthew was the son of Alphaeus, and this other James was also the son of Alphaeus, mm -hmm. and somebody said, well, maybe it's the same, same Alphaeus. Alphaeus yeah, you know, but maybe there were, you know, a dime a dozen uh, yeah, Alphaeus. They, yeah, <laughs> it may have been like James and John today. <laughs> exactly, you know? exactly. So it's my yeah. son of Alphaeus, it, and Elizabeth's son of uh, yeah. daughter of Alphaeus, and yeah. we're not brother and sister. No, so. no. Yeah, well, that's frightening. <laughs> <laughs> just the thought? Yeah, that's the thought. But uh, verse 40 here of, Matthew, of, of Mark 15, it says, But there were also some women looking on from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the Less, Joseph and Salome. So m the mother of James the Less was, was there. And, well, and he is this mentioned there. is our verse. If you yeah. want to know something about this other James, yeah. it's just this one word. Yeah. Mar James the Less. 
the, the less, less. The less. And okay. in English, that sounds rather demeaning, does it not? It, 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 it is, and it, it might not have been meant that way. No, no. But, you know, it's, some translations say James the Younger. The Younger, and it may, that may be a more accurate yes. translation. No matter what the translation is, yeah. Is there was a big James yeah. and a little James. The, yeah, this is little James. You remember little James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah, was, yeah. A, he was the tag along. Yeah, he, he was back in the back of the group. He was not the one. Yeah, he okay. wasn't always so up close to Jesus. So I brought my Russian dolls, which yeah. made all my producers laugh about. Yeah, but, I've, yeah, I've been laughing about that quite a bit because James looked rather feminine there, but well, still. Well, but that's not the point. The point is to I'm, have I'm something. <laughs> the point is to have a large James. Well, and a small. And a small James. James. Right. Okay, so the... the yeah, big James and little James. Big James, it's like, for example, I don't know all the names of all the people that are working here with us today, mm -hmm. but let's say that there was a Mike yeah. and another Mike yeah. that was, I don't know, 15 yeah. years old or 20 years old yeah. or short yeah. or something. So so you were Mike and they were Mikey. Yeah, Mikey. Yeah. Okay, or maybe you were Mikey. Yeah. And, and Is that a possibility? An old, uh, I've, I've been Mikey <laughs> when I was you, younger. No one calls me that now, but you know. They don't? No. Oh, no. I know what I'm going to start calling you now. Mikey. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you don't call an old guy Mikey, you know. So. That's true. With that yeah. one, you got me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you so, go. So let's read it again. And this is the only thing we have where we know that there was a second James, and mm -hmm. he was called in Greek the Mikros. The Mikros. So the, the word in Greek, Mikros, I mean, what, what words do we have in English that start with micro? Well, micro would be small. Yes, yeah. micro. Microorganism, yeah. Uh, yeah. Microorganism, microscope, yeah. Yeah, all the, all the micros in English come from the Greek word micro. micros. Micros. Yeah. And so this man is called James. The little bitty. The micros. <laughs> You know, yeah. and so every time somebody said James, they always had to say, "Oh, okay, we're talking about the little one, the little guy, the, or, or the short one, or yeah. the or the less, or the younger one, or exactly. the lesser one." We don't know one. exactly. Yeah. So, uh, this is James the less. And so, how would you feel? And and I have seen in the kingdom of God that God has a pattern to work with Micros. Mm -hmm, he does. He he is able to take people that you you don't think are going to measure up. Uh huh. And he does great things with these individuals. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes they become well known because of the great things they do, and other times, you know, they, they, they labor in obscurity, but they produce wonderful results. But did you know that the whole kingdom is is um, compared to a, a mustard seed? Yes. And did you know that the word micros is used by Jesus when he says is the smallest of the mm -hmm. seeds, and mm -hmm. and he uses the same word yeah. micros? Yeah, it's like, it's like James over here. It's, it's the like, smallest one. You word. know, it's like James yeah. over here. Yeah. See, but the problem is that the disciples didn't like to be micros, mm -hmm. and so they kept uh, arguing about who was the macro, the macro, yeah, the maison, yeah, the the uh, the, biggest, uh, the greatest, the biggest. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to actually go there because Jesus decides to to tell them, look. Micros is the way this kingdom works. So stop talking about, you know, the the, the biggest, the mason, the megas, mm -hmm. you know, the megaphone, the big yeah. one, because that's yeah. not the way the kingdom of God works. Uh, and so we're going to read when they kept arguing about it. You know, sometimes I'm going, Jesus had these disciples that were so dense. Mm -hmm. And then I look at myself and I'm going, okay, I'm yeah, a disciple I, I of Jesus. Have, I could have been one of the disciples, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am and, one of the fact, disciples. In fact, I would not have been one of the bright disciples. So. You would have been Mikey. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Luke chapter 9, verse 46. I'm going to start reading now to hush yes, you up. Yes. An argument started among them as to which of them might be the greatest. And here we have the word. Yeah. Megas or Maison is word. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, I want to be the big one, the big John, yeah. the big Peter, the yeah. big James, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, but Jesus, knowing that what they were thinking inside their heart, took a child and stood him by his side and said to them, Whoever receives this child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. For the one who is least among all of you, this is the one who is great. What do you think the word is for least? Uh, would it be micro? No, for least is micros. Oh. And for the micros, great... Yeah. It's macros, macros and the maison. So Jesus says, you, can you people stop arguing about this? Mm -hmm. Look at this little child. Yeah. Again, it takes the, our values and turns them upside down. That's the point. That, that is the whole point of this is that our values are turned upside down. That which we think is great is small. That which Where's we think small is small is great. Is great. And it's, it, a, it's a reversal of the values. But, the things that I think are so important are really of, of no value to, to, to the kingdom of heaven. And I think it's so awesome because I, I see a child, you know, 
how they trust. I mean, yes. you you are recently a, a grandparent. Oh, I've got two the, the the sweetest little grandchildren you've ever seen. If you want to be bored sometime, let me tell you stories. <laughs> I've got I've got them like crazy. But you know what? You you hold those children. I'm, I have the opportunity to tell them Bible stories. Wow. And they'll sit in my lap and I tell them Bible stories and, and the eyes are just wide open with excitement. And they want to hear the same story over and over again. Yeah. And it's just exciting to them. And then their play, they will act out the story I just oh, told them. Oh, wow. And that is it's wow. awesome to and watch that. You know, Jesus said, what am I going to do with these disciples that keep arguing about who's the micro and the major? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to bring a child. So he called one of your grandchildren. Yes. Because they were somebody's grandchild. Yes. Uh, and bet. he said, okay, this is the little child. See. Yeah. This is how you have to be mm -hmm. if you're going to be in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it humbles all of us. Mm -hmm. and, and I can almost hear James the less going, oh, you mean I can be in the kingdom? Yeah, like because me. I, he's, he's micros like me. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of the disciples that the only thing we have mm -hmm. is this little nickname that somebody de decided to give him. Mm -hmm. Then we have a second uh, not so known disciple. He had the unfortunate... Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, actually, it's unfortunate for, for us because of what we know now. But Judas was a very known name because he was from the tribe of Judah. And if you go back to Genesis when Leah is having children and, mm -hmm. and she has three children already, the fourth one, mm -hmm. she decides to stop trying to get her husband's affection because mm -hmm. Levi means attached. My husband's going to be attached to yeah. me because I have bore him three sons. Yeah. But on the fourth one, she gives up. And she yeah. says, on this one, I'm just going to praise the Lord. And she names him Judah. Judah. So the tribe of Judah is a, is a beautiful name. And, and actually, Judas mm -hmm. comes from the meaning of praise. Mm -hmm. But this man was not the Judas that betrayed Jesus. Yeah. You don't hear anyone naming the child Judas today. You know, it just just does not happen. And, and of course... The, the Judas that we know the best is the it's one, the one who, is, betrayed. who has is the one who this has destroyed that called, name for us today. That's what it is. This one yeah. is called Judas Thaddeus. Is that, yeah. that's, that's yeah. how you guys say but, it in English yeah. in Texas? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, but, but not that Judas. You know, this not, is not, not that Judas. Well, this is a different guy. I have to tell you a story before we go on. Yeah. A, a very funny story, actually. You know, my, my family has been blessed with five generations alive. Mm -hmm. So my grandma is turning 101. Oh, wonderful. So the great-granddaughter mm -hmm. was going to have a child, mm -hmm. which was the fifth generation. Mm -hmm. So the whole family <laughs> was so excited about this. She's going to kill me that I'm telling this story on television. And so all the, all the, all the aunts, the, the grand aunts, yes. which are the, the, the grandma and, and all the mm -hmm. sisters, which my mother was part of, they want to know what she's going to name this child, right? Uh, and not all of them speak English very well, and, and uh, she lives here, and she's American. And so we hear the first time, his name is going to be Jonah. Jonah? No, 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 it wasn't Jonah. The, she says, Judas. So my other mm. uh, uh, great aunt goes, Judas? Who names their child Judas? Judas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my whole family is going crazy. Yeah. Is this child really going to be named yes. Judas? Yeah. And then we decide to call the mother of the baby. Yeah. And he goes, and they go, no, we decided to name him Judah because Judah. He, he means praise. praise. And his name is Judah. Yeah. But I remember my whole family going, uh, Judas? Judas? <laughs> yeah, why Judas? Why would you do this to the child? <laughs> That's what they said. That's it, was, right. it was so funny. Mm -hmm. And this is what happened to Judas. Judas mm -hmm. Thaddeus is not the Judas that betrayed Jesus. And um, the name means praise, as we told you. It was frequently used among the Jews. But in John chapter 14, verse 22, we realize the struggle of this man throughout his life mm -hmm. to say, by the way, I'm Judas, but not. But not that <laughs> Judas, yeah. In fact, John 14, 22, Judas, in parentheses, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, what then has happened that you are going to disclose yourself to us and not to the world? Yes. So he's asking a question here, you know, about the Jesus' self uh, revelation. Yes, it's the only question we have yeah. of Judas Thaddeus, yeah. and we're going to talk about it. But, but he's see, identified there as, well, not that Judas, yeah, no, not, it, not, yes. not the one who betrayed uh, I him. I mean, I hope you look at it in your not Bible, Iscariot. because it has, uh, because John is very strong with the other Judas. Yeah. It's like, John, the one who betrayed him. Yeah. That one, you yeah. know. So here he puts a parenthesis, yeah. and, and probably your Bible has a parenthesis, John 14, 22, Judas, not, not Iscariot. Iscariot. <laughs> so, not that guy. Yeah, so I made a, a little sign for myself. 
Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you see which way the, the I, arrow. I've noticed that. You've the got arrow the arrow pointing going. toward me, I, and I'm really greatly offended by this. You are? <laughs> yeah, uh, greatly. We can talk about it after the show. Yeah, I'm, I'm, okay. I need therapy now. All right. <laughs> so imagine your whole life, imagine your whole life saying, Hey, you just. I, I knocked what over did you James do with the my James Well, he's so little, he's easy to knock over. I was helping you. <laughs> okay, so sign, be here visible. we have not that Judas. Not yeah, your mm. whole life defending yourself. Yeah. No, I'm you, not that guy. Yeah. You, you know, uh, it happens in churches a lot. Yeah. That somebody goes, Are you the one that was in jail yeah. for a yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, I'm a different John. Yeah. Yeah. You know? uh, even uh, not just the name, but I, I uh, have a friend of mine who has a different uh, theology than I have. Uh -huh. And he's still a friend of mine, but we're just different in this area. He spoke to a group of, of young pastors. Oh. And what he said ticked off a lot of people. <laughs> and, and one of the people <laughs> who heard about this confused him with me and came and was just oh, wow. blessing me out about the terrible things I said. <laughs> I said, when did I say this? And don't <laughs> deny it. I know you did this. And he was and, a different man. And finally, finally I asked him, who am I? And he gave me the other guy's name. Oh. I said, wrong guy. I'm and, not that. I'm not that guy, you know. I got my own stuff you can be mad at me about, yeah, but yeah, not, yeah, not that, that stuff. <laughs> Chew me out about my stuff, not his stuff. So, so I had to defend myself. I'm not that guy. So this particular disciple spent his yeah. life saying, I'm not, not that, that guy. guy. <laughs> yeah. And as a matter of fact, what, what uh, Mike just talked about is the only question that we have of Judas. Uh, in chapter mm -hmm. 14, Jesus starts telling the disciples that he's going to go away. Mm -hmm. And one of the most beautiful verses are chapter 14, verses verses one, two, three. Uh, I'm sure yeah. you repeated this in, in, in the hospitals many times oh, yeah, to a lot yeah. of people. Do you want to yeah. do it again? Yeah, do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places or mansions mm -hmm. in some translations. Uh, if it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. See, in this discourse that Jesus is saying, look, I have this yeah. handle, all of that. Yeah. All the disciples start uh, asking questions. Peter on verse 37 says, Laura, why, can why can't we follow you now? Mm -hmm. you know? And Thomas, who was ax I was the anxious one, he mm -hmm. says, Laura, we do not know where you're going. How mm -hmm. do we know the way? Yeah. And Philip, who was the more pragmatic one that yeah. wanted the map, mm -hmm. he, Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father. We want to see. Yeah. If, if, if we yeah. see, it's enough for us. Mm -hmm. And after all these questions, J, uh, this Judas that he is not that one, mm -hmm. the other one, the other he Jews. puts all his strengths together mm -hmm. and, and asks ask a question. A question. And People the only said, who are you? <laughs> yeah, who are you? What <laughs> Yo, is your name? Yeah, okay, like, I'm not that Judas. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm not that okay. Judas. Yeah. And so he says, said he has to him, Lord, what then has happened that you are going to disclose yourself to us and not to the world? Because Jesus is talking about so what he's going to do. Yeah. yeah. And see, this man has spent his whole life defending himself that he's not that one. Yeah. He can't understand why Jesus is not making his kingdom more obvious. Yeah. And the world, the, the word uh, world is cosmos, you know? Mm -hmm. Why can't you just once and for all show everybody yeah. that you are the one? You know, and and haven't you sometimes felt like that, uh, uh, saying to Jesus, "Why don't you once and for all just kind of show yeah. up in the sky Speak. or something, yeah. and so people will believe in you?" Say, "Hey guys, I really am here." You yes, know? exactly. Yeah. So he says, "Why will you show yourself to mm -hmm. us and not to the world?" Yeah. And so this poor guy that spent the whole life saying, "Okay, I'm not that one," mm -hmm. he says, "Jesus, why don't you show who you are?" Yeah. And Jesus answered by by talking about love, love because yeah. the way that Jesus. We, you know, the best thing for Jesus <laughs> is love mm -hmm. between him and us and between the, his disciples. Well, even John 14, 1 through 3 is written in the language of the bridegroom because he would leave and go prepare a place for the bride, building on an extension of the Father's house. And when that was ready, he'd prepare the feast. When all was ready, he would come back, exactly. receive his bride. He would have already paid the dowry exactly. and receive the bride to himself. And yes. that's the language that Jesus is using there. That's it's right. a love language uh -huh. of the, the bridegroom and that's the how bride. He, uh, and that's how we, he will answer the question. Yeah. He would say, verse 23, Jesus answered yeah. and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our abode with him and yeah, he, we're gonna and live he with him yeah again. yeah so, so don't worry it's not a the show of intimacy exactly and so this is the only question we have of, of Judas mm. not Iscariot yeah, yeah. and the third disciple that we want to talk to you about is um, called Simon the, the zealot Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that we have on him. Yeah. And we don't know, uh, the word in Greek is zelotes, and it's yeah. actually twice. And Luke is the one that mentions him mm -hmm. twice. In Luke 6.15, mm -hmm. 
and in Acts 1.13, and he both times uses Zy Simon the Zelotes is mm -hmm. in Greek, the mm -hmm. Zealot. Mm -hmm. Why do you think he called him that? Well, you know, it could have been a couple of things. Either he was just zealous for, for his faith and for, for Israel, or he could have been truly one of the zealots who was uh, actually uh, promised to destroy Herodians on, on yeah, site, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. kind of a, the, the revolutionary kind of Yeah, thing, that's which why is I have amazing, a little yeah, yeah. Which is amazing. If he was that guy yeah. and you had a tax collector <laughs> also in the midst of this, he was honor bound to destroy right. the tax collector. That's and right. yet he did not. Again, a testimony to the love of Jesus. That's right. Well, the, the zealots, and some scholars believe he was simply zealous, yeah. you know, yeah. but if he was part of the party of the, the, zealots. Of the zealots, then uh, it, that's amazing. It, there was a little group called the Sicarii mm -hmm. who were so zealous for Judaism that they used to carry these little knives and in yeah. big crowds, yeah. they used to uh, kill Stab, people yeah. and just Come keep walking. Come up behind him quietly and They were the terrorists, yeah. the, the terrorists of terrorists. that time. Absolutely. And so we don't know much about him other than he was either part of this party or he yeah. simply had such great zeal and mm -hmm. passion. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Paul, is, uh, the same word is used of Paul. Yeah. That he had such zeal. zeal. Yeah. Right? And yeah. the zelotes also yeah. and comes up. Obviously, after. he wasn't carrying a dagger, but, but, um, but who knows? Well, why would Jesus choose such ordinary people um, for such an extraordinary job to change the world? You know, James the Less, mm -hmm. Judah's not that one, yeah. Simon the Zealot. Yeah. If, if he had chosen people with great talent, then mm. people would have ascribed the, the great effect on the world to their gifts and their talents. We are, but the truth all, is, it does, they had nothing. We are all ordinary, except in extraordinary yeah. grace. And, and uh, we're all beggars, yes. you know, that, that have been given a feast, yeah. you know? Beggars being given a feast. Yeah. I'm reminded of the, the story of a man who was a beggar who found a, a winning lottery ticket in the trash as he was rummaging through trying to find something to eat. Huh? And he kept checking the ticket. Yes, this is the winning lottery ticket. He checked the newspaper and <laughs> he realized he, it had, in the trash he had millions in his hand that <gasps> someone had just thrown away. Wow. And all of a sudden, he finds himself being interviewed by this female reporter, and the lights are on him, and it's finally struck, struck him. He'll never again go through garbage cans. Wow. He's a beggar who's going to live with a feast the rest of his life. Wow, what a great description of the kingdom of God. Exactly. And I have here the crown of the kingdom of God. The truth is, you know why we're all here and why we are disciples of Jesus? It's because we are James the Less, and we are... Judah's not that one. And we are perhaps a little zealous and passionate and sometimes known for things that would not be as good for other people. But the truth is the kingdom of, of God uses the micros. The kingdom of God uses the least. There is a reversal of values in light of the cross. And God has decided to choose disciples such as us because the angels can't talk about grace because they have never fallen. But we, human beings, will be talking about grace for the rest of eternity because we are ordinary people that have accepted extraordinary grace and that has changed our world forever. <laughs>